previous lectures, we have discussed about the general principle of electrophoresis. We have discussed about the factors which affects a successful electrophoretic run uh, like electrophoretic mobility, heating that is joule heating and the electro osmotic flow. Also, if you could recall, we have discussed about uh, horizontal and vertical gel electrophoresis. Uh, as we were discussing, the two most widely used matrices are agarose gels and the polyacrylamide gels. Uh, agarose gels are mostly utilized for uh, separating uh, nucleic acids, uh, whereas uh, polyacrylamide gels are mostly utilized for protein separation. Uh, polyacrylamide gels could be utilized for DNA separation that is of very small DNA fragments. And likewise, uh, proteins could be utilized for uh, the agarose gels could be utilized for uh, not really protein separation, but where uh, you can have certain analysis like say immuno electrophoresis or isoelectric focusing where uh, sieving effect is not required actually. So, uh, so there a protein could be analyzed. Uh, so, uh, we will continue our discussion uh, on electrophoresis uh, and extend our discussion from where we have left. So, if you could recall we left at uh, the vertical and horizontal gel electrophoresis. Now, uh, there are different kinds of buffer systems which are utilized in electrophoresis. Uh, and buffer systems when, it, when we are talking about is uh, when you cast the gel or when you polymerize the gel, you polymerize them in a particular buffer. Now, this electro, uh, electrolyte buffer uh, plays an, uh, a very important role in electrophoresis separation or in experiments and it greatly affects the separation and resolution. So, electrolyte buffer is very important and uh, greatly affects the separation and resolution uh, of a particular analyte. Now, proteins uh, differ quite a lot in their sensitivity to pH, ionic strength, types of ions and uh, as we have discussed that proteins, uh, the charge on proteins will depend on uh, what pH buffer you are taking and that will depend on what, what is the pi value of that protein as proteins are amphoteric molecules and they can carry either positive or negative charge as per the pH and their pi values actually. Now, in electrophoresis uh, there are two types of buffer systems, one is called continuous buffer system and another is discontinuous buffer system. Uh, it can also be called as multiphasic buffer system. So, continuous buffer system is a single buffer system that where you are utilizing single buffer whereas, in discontinuous system you will have more than one kind of buffer or uh, maybe two buffers or three buffers. Now, for nearly all electrophoresis uh, of concerning nucleic acids, uh, mostly continuous systems are utilized uh, either in uh, agarose gels or polyacrylamide gels, uh, whereas, the electrophoresis of proteins is mostly done on a discontinuous system. So, uh, uh, there is a difference in here. We will discuss both types here. Uh, Let us start with continuous buffer system. Now, in continuous system a single buffer or constant pH is used in gel as well as electrode reservoirs. So, it is a single buffer all over. Now, sample is loaded directly onto the gel where separation will occur and they are fractionated as per, as per their mobility. So, the height or uh, we can say the amount of the sample volume which you are taking will determine the bandwidth and this will limit resolution attained by the continuous system. So, what will happen if you have dilute samples then you have to load larger amounts or larger volumes of the sample for detection uh, of that particular molecule and what will happen is this will certainly lead to uh, relatively uh, you can say broader or wide bands. So, therefore, the continuous system with constant pore size gels uh, is kind of restricted to only high concentration, because if you apply sample in high concentration 
uh, then uh, you get uh, better results, uh, not so broader or wide bands. Uh, but in dilute solutions, since you are loading too much of solutions, uh, the band widths will be uh, uh, higher actually. Uh, so, uh, this system has a certain problem. Let me uh, show you on a screen how this uh, affects the uh, resolution as such. All right. So, if you can pay attention on your screen here. Uh, so, when we are loading the samples as if you could recall I was telling you about the wells uh, or slots are created for loading the samples. And if you have a sample, if you have a gel apparatus or slab gel electrophoresis you are doing, you have a plate and you have created uh, two plates uh, between which through spacers you cast your gel. And what you do is in the in top of the gel, you will create the wells where you are going to load the sample. Now, samples could be loaded in two ways, one like dilute solutions will be loaded here all over. Now, if I just kind of uh, uh, show you this here that if I have a sample here that is at this place and this place and this place, let me show it here. Say this is your uh, well where we are loading this sample here. Now, you have a sample here, you have a sample here and you have a sample here. And this is the boundary or this is the interface here, where from the sample is going to enter the gel. Now, obviously, when you have dilute solutions like this is your uh, amount of sample you have taken and it is a large volume, then since your analyte or your molecule is distributed all, all over, the molecule which is closest to the uh, gel interface will enter first here and will also move somewhat here on uh, application of electric field. But this one, this molecule with the same analyte will uh, there will be a time gap when it enters as relative to this one molecule that is if I say number 1 and this is number 2, then this will move somewhere then the 2 will enter in here. So, what will happen? This band may be they catch up slowly later on, but still they will not be able to be like this rather they will appear to be a broader band will be uh, uh, will be seen rather than this kind of band. So, what will happen is that with dilute solutions uh, it is not uh, uh, running a continuous system is not advisable, uh, but it has been seen for nucleic acids it uh, does not really make so much of difference. So, for uh, nucleic acids continuous systems are mostly run, but for proteins uh, you get much bro broader band if it is a dilute solution. And so, you will run rather a discontinuous system than a continuous system. So, continuous systems are not uh, advisable uh, in the case of uh, proteins. All right. So, so uh, now number 2 buffer system which we were discussing was discontinuous or we can call it multiphasic buffer system. Now, this system uses different buffers in the gel and electrode reservoirs. Uh, if you could recall, I have shown you uh, that on the top and bottom there will be electrode reservoirs, where electrodes are placed and you have a tank buffer or electrode buffer. Uh, and is uh, this, so uh, these are designed to main purpose of discontinuous multiphasic buffer system is to concentrate or sharpen the sample zones for high resolution separation. As I have shown you uh, right uh, a little while back that if you have dilute solutions and if they enter the gel at different times, the broader bands will be obtained. So, best thing is to make sure when they uh, enter the separating gel or resolving gel, then they enter as one entity. And so, uh, it is like uh, the running uh, line is same for all molecules and so, uh, you can get better resolutions during the separation. So, to concentrate the sample in a very narrow zone, uh, a large pore stacking gel uh, which serves as an anti convective medium here. When you say large pore, then proteins will be moving unhindered, there will not be any uh, kind of restrictive uh, migration here as uh, large pore size will not have that. So, it is only anti convective, uh, convective, uh, convective medium. 
Now, all ionic species for moving uh, fronts here, uh, where buffer ion front leads. Uh, so, you have what are ionic species here? Ionic species will be certainly when you have a multiphasic buffer system, one ionic species is your protein and other ionic species is like a buffer which is a gel buffer and, uh, and then the electrode buffer. So, these are the ionic species. So, if you say all ionic species when electric current is applied, uh, they move a moving front actually. So, where what happens? A buffer ion front leads uh, as it is ionized completely and moves ahead of the sample molecule. So, buffer ion, we will see what are the buffer ions and all those details here. Uh, electrode reservoir buffer ion fronts trails behind the sample and we will see why it, uh, it trail, trails behind. And the sample ions uh, are between the two fronts that is uh, buffer ion front and the trailing front reserv reservoir ion front. So, what happens is uh, uh, this sample molecules or sample ions are sandwiched or you know they are compressed between the two fronts uh, into a very narrow sharp zone uh, in order of their mobilities. If there is a mixture of the sample then in order of their mobilities they will settle down. So, sample molecules stack in a very narrow region. So, uh, what you can say that uh, it could be a, a few micrometers uh, thick uh, and may contain a very high concentration of protein say 100 milligram per ml or so. So, stacked samples uh, move through the stacking gel in a very narrow zones uh, regardless of their initial uh, sample volume and then when they enter resolving gel. Now, resolving gel contains a small pore size. So, what happens? Uh, the stacking uh, these stacked samples uh, will be unstacked and they will move according to the size and charge uh, in the resolving gel. So, what discontinuous system is essentially doing it is putting two gel systems where stacking gel is to concentrate the sample. So, that you can good get good uh, separation uh, uh, good resolution here. So, discontinuous gel electrophoresis uh, was uh, like it was first developed by Onstein and Davis in 64 and they were first to develop a high resolution poly polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis uh, for the native proteins. Now, it was discontinuous and non denaturing. So, there was no denaturing agents uh, in this gel electrophoresis system and this is the extensively used uh, technique in gel electrophoresis. Uh, with certain modification, we will see the modifications here. Now, uh, their system is made of four interrelated components here and which includes a stacking gel and again stacking gel will contain a buffer, a resolving or separating gel with a buffer uh, uh, concentrations and an ele electrode buffer uh, that is a trisglycine buffer and the sample buffer. Sample will also be uh, put in a uh, like it could be uh, simple like stacking gel buffer or it will have particular kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, concentrations. Now, stacking gel has a lower acrylamide concentration uh, like I said it is a large pore size it is around 4 percent T and is cast on top of the resolving gel. Now, resolving gel can range from say 5 to 20 percent or even up to 30 percent you can make, but uh, it is up to 20 percent mostly is utilized. Now, stacking has a lower pH and ionic strength. So, stacking gel has uh, tris Cl which is pH 6.8 and it has a lower ionic strength also. Uh, then the separating gel which has a pH of 8.8 and it has a higher ionic strength around 0.375 molar tris Cl as compared to 0.125 molar in stacking buffer. Now, the pH difference in two gels regulate the mobility of glycinate ions from cathode reservoir chamber and uh, the concentration of buffers are also derived from electrochemical uh, considerations. So, uh, the main aim is to concentrate the sample actually and accordingly these pH and concentrations have been derived or designed you can say. Uh, the stacking gel with large pore size uh, mainly functions as anti convective support as uh, we were saying 
and helps in formation of sharp zones without impeding the migration of proteins. Uh, separation of proteins will take place in the separating buffer. So, remember stacking gel is only for concentration and not really for separation here. Now, the sample buffer uh, is uh, uh, little uh, have uh, uh, less ionic strength again, it is a 0 0.0625 molar twist Cl in Ornstein Davis uh, design uh, and pH is same 6.8 as that of stacking gel or stacking buffer. Now, this is loaded on the wells as I have shown you present in the stacking gel. Uh, so, sample is loaded or located between the stacking gel and the electrode buffer. Uh, now, electrode buffer uh, the is 0.25 molar tris and 0.192 molar glycine and pH automatically comes to 8.3. So, the ionic strength of sample solution is lower than the buffers above and below. All right. So, uh, let me show you uh, on the screen like what is the situation here. So, what you have is on this gel you have two gels actually. So, what is this? This is stacking gel, this is resolving gel. So, automatically when you are casting the gel first you have to put pour resolving gel and then after uh, resolving gel is polymerized then you put uh, stacking gel actually. Uh, these are wells where the sample is loaded. So, your sample will be loaded in these wells as per like how many samples you have and on top of this there will be you can say there will be electrode buffer and top and bottom there will be electrode buffer. This is cathode chamber and this is anode chamber all right. So, this is how the whole thing is in here. So, uh, you can see the sample is between the stacking gel and the electrode buffer here. All right. So, uh, let us move on. Uh, so, when power is ap uh, applied what will happen is a voltage drop develops across the sample and it helps in driving the sample into the gel that is stacking gel. Now, as the current begins to flow uh, like I said the buffer ions leads actually. So, here chloride ions uh, here uh, chloride ions uh, will lead and the gel uh, as, uh, as the current begins to flow uh, these uh, chloride ions will be first to move uh, then proteins in the sample with negative charge will move and then glycinate ions in the electrode buffer starts moving towards anode. So, three things which are moving in here is one is the chloride ions, second is the uh, uh, chloride ions in the gel, then protein in the sample with negative charge. Remember positive charge protein will not move towards the anode and glycinate ions in the electrode buffer uh, moves towards anode. So, what is the pattern here? So, all cations which I am saying tris or say proteins with positive charge uh, will move towards cathode. So, we are uh, it is a it is a hard thing uh, to separate. So, uh, it is like you have to change buffer conditions or certain things, but we are talking about here discontinuous system. So, here you will not be able to see cationic proteins as such. Now, chloride ion with higher mobility move out of the sample and a localized low conductivity and high field region is created behind. So, which will accelerate the proteins in the sample and the glycinate ions from the electrode buffer to same velocity as the chloride ion. Now, the effective mobility of glycinate ions is less than those of chloride ions and proteins as the glycinate ions are not completely ionized at lower pH. Remember pH of the stacking gel is 6.8 and even in uh, this uh, reservoir electrode reservoir it is uh, 8.3 around. So, uh, glycinate ions are not fully ionized, uh, so they move uh, uh, like little slower. So, they trail behind actually. So, what uh, uh, moving boundary is formed here with chloride ions in the front 
and the glycinate ions in the rear with protein sandwiched between them. So, it is compressed between the two uh, fronts, one is leading front, another is trailing fr front. Now, the protein molecules uh, uh, concentrate here as individual thin zones in order of their decreasing mobility. Say, if you have more than one protein, one kind of protein or one type of protein molecule, then different protein molecules uh, as per their mobility, they will concentrate as thin zones, but they will concentrate here uh, between two fronts leading and trailing glycinate ions. Now, when the moving boundary region will reach the interface of stacking and resolving gel. So, in a stacking gel, what is the situation? That due to these pH differences, ionic differences, uh, it is like one uh, front that is chloride front leads and the glycinate ion front trails and it will in between uh, proteins are sandwiched and they are compressed uh, and finally, uh, sharp zones are formed. Uh, uh, and this particular process is known as isotachophoresis. So, when these uh, are concentrated and they reach the uh, interface uh, of stacking and resolving gel, uh, so they will concentrate at that interface because they are going as uh, thin zones here uh, and they will enter into the resolving gel as one entity. So, as they reach there, the chloride ions and the glycinate ions which uh, leaves behind the protein. Now, here uh, if you uh, remember the pH of resolving gel is 8.8 .8 and as the glycinate ions move the pH is much higher of the resolving gel uh, and so the glycinate ions are not fully ionized and they move as per their uh, velocities, but proteins because now it is entering a, a low pore size gel. Uh, so, there will be a restrictive migration as per their size and charge. And so, protein will now uh, they will enter the resolving gel and they will experience a, a sharp retardation uh, due to the resolving gel, it's more, it's smaller pore size of the resolving gel. And uh, these protein zones uh, which we were talking about, which were stacked actually, uh, that is why it is called a stacking gel, now they unstack. And since they are of uh, there, there was no hindrance or movement uh, in a stacking gel, but here. Uh, since small large or other proteins uh, will have to move according to the pore size. So, they will unstack and separate according to their size in charge. So, what you see is that all these factors will result in the uh, proteins becoming uh, compressed at the interface uh, of the gels and th therefore, giving you very high resolution in these experiments. So, this is discontinuous system is quite useful system uh, uh, for uh, for higher resolution for protein separation. Now, this figure shows uh, the things very clearly here. What you see here uh, like I showed you, there is a tank buffer which is a cathode uh, electrode is there, negative uh, electrode, there is a tank buffer or uh, tank below, uh, reservoir below which is also filled with reservoir buffer. So, there is reservoir buffer here and here. Uh, there is a separating gel which is larger if you can see uh, most of the plate is covered with separating gel and there is a very small part is uh, stacking gel here. You load your samples in this wells and if you can see these samples are distributed here uh, big and small, but they form boundaries here uh, thin zones and when these thin zones enter like there one here one here when they enter the gel at the interface into the resolving gel they will separate according to their size and chart. So, this is how discontinuous system works actually uh, and uh, it is very well depicted in here. All right. So, this was about two buffer systems which are widely used one continuous system and another is discontinuous or multiphasic systems. All right. So, we will start with the electrophoresis of proteins. Now, there are many uh, variations of electrophoresis uh, which are commonly used. Uh, there are a lot of techniques which are used for electro uh, different applications uh, for analysis of proteins uh, and we will discuss some of them like there are native gel electrophoresis. Now, native gel electrophoresis is one where analyte uh, separated is according to 
the differences in apparent mobility and uh, and protein is not denatured here. Then there is SDS page or sodium dodecyl sulphate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, where what you see is that uh, analytes are uh, denatured because of SDS and they are separated according to size. And then there is isoelectric focusing, where in isoelectric focusing the separation is on the basis of the pi values of proteins as P, uh, the proteins are amphoteric molecules and they carry a net charge. Uh, the charge is 0, net charge is 0 at their isoelectric points and that becomes the basis for separation. And then there is two dimensional gel electrophoresis, which is uh, quite uh, uh, used in, uh, in with mass spectrometry techniques, where you can uh, separate large number of uh, uh, protein samples in a particular proteome, uh, say you are isolating it from certain uh, cells or tissues and then they could be analyzed by mass spectrometry. So, we are going to discuss all these techniques. Uh, today, we will be discussing about uh, native gels and STS page. So, uh, native gels as we were discussing in the continuous uh, and discontinuous system, uh, like Ornstein and Davis system was for native proteins actually, uh, where you have not put any denaturing agent actually. So, in native gels, non denaturing conditions are used to detect the protein in its active form, particularly in case of enzymes, where you would like to see the activity of the enzymes, then you might want to use the native gels. Now, in native gels, polyacrylamide gels are used, but the SDS or any other denaturing agent is absent. Uh, so, uh, you do not uh, denature the protein in any way here. Uh, since all the proteins in the samples being analyzed carry their native charge, at the pH of the gel, uh, proteins will separate according to their different electrophoretic mobilities and the sieving effect of the gel. And various types of uh, native gels like you can use, uh, there is no restriction on uh, the pH of the buffer, uh, you can uh, very well uh, uh, design or you can uh, as per your requirement, you can use uh, certain buffers for, uh, for uh, native gels. Uh, then you can detect it by various uh, methods, which we are going to discuss uh, in uh, later lectures. So, this was about STS page actually, uh, this was about native gels. Now, one of the main techniques, which is widely used in a lot of different research labs and uh, in uh, uh, teaching labs is the STS page or sodium dodecyl polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So, we were discussing about Ornstein and Davis discontinuous and non denaturing system, if you could recall uh, a while ago. Now, this particular system has been modified by Lamely uh, to a discontinuous, but denaturing system. Now, Lamely system uh, made it possible to determine the molecular weight or molecular mass of the proteins. Uh, how it is done, we will be uh, discussing that. So, what happens here? Uh, rather than having uh, like in Ornstein Davis, where no denaturing agent was used. In this system of Lamely, there is a denaturing agent, which is 0.1 percent STS, that is an anionic detergent will be utilized in buffers. And also it will be introduced, uh, like one more step was introduced, that is denaturing step in sample preparation or sample treatment. So, what happens? Uh, if you treat the samples, uh, which contains around 2 percent STS and also a heating step is introduced here, uh, which will completely denature the sample uh, proteins to their constituent polypeptides before the run. So, here sample treatment involves uh, like I said heating in particular buffer uh, and this buffer, which is like mostly stacking gel buffer like I told you earlier. And, but this buffer with sample buffer, which we were discussing in Orstein and Davis system, uh, will also be having 2 percent STS and also a reducing agent like 5 percent uh, beta mercaptoethanol. So, uh, so, the proteins are completely denatured and polypeptides will take a uniform charge to mass ratio, which is imparted by STS. 
uh, also reducing agent will break any disulfide bonds between polypeptides or within polypeptide chains. Uh, so, that STS can, uh, can be interacting with all parts of the polypeptide chain. Many times what happens when disulfide bridges are not broken, uh, there are regions where STS is not uh, accessible and uh, maybe uh, erratic patterns could be seen in here. So, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis in the presence of STS is the most common form of protein gel electrophoresis. Now, here uh, there is lithium dodecyl sulphate that is an alternative which could be utilized, uh, but STS is the most widely used uh, detergent. Now, STS disrupts uh, some of the non covalent interactions that stabilizes a protein quaternary and tertiary structures uh, and which and facilitates denaturation. What happens STS uh, has negative charge and what it will bind to the protein in a constant mass ratio that is a mass ratio of 1.4 gram of STS uh, binding to 1 gram of polypeptide. So, that total amount of detergent bound is directly proportional to the molecular weight of the protein. So, it is 1.4 gram of STS per gram of polypeptide or protein you can say. So, what it does is STS coats uh, the polypeptide completely and coating of negatively charged STS overwhelms the inherent charge of protein molecule and gives them a uniform charge to mass ratio. So, this is like uh, now protein will carry a net negative charge um, as per its molecular mass uh, because of the interaction of STS. Now, remember many times uh, though this happens, but certain proteins with say a uh, lot of basic residues uh, say lysines or others um, may there might be certain uh, discrepancies in uh, charge to mass ratio and um, there might be certain problems in running, but in general uh, this is uh, the rule where you have a particular mass to uh, charge ratio actually. So, uh, uh, the, so, this allows uh, proteins to be separated on the basis of their relative size, because uh, the charge that is negative charge is according to their molecular mass. So, you are essentially separating it on the basis of uh, size actually. So, what happens is uh, uh, as we were discussing about what happens to proteins. So, a protein is uh, folded here, it has interactions uh, and uh, uh, so there are hydrophobic areas, uh, there are other charged groups, hydrogen bonding all those things. Now, when you treat it with the STS protein is extended and it is overall covered by the negative charge. So, that is what now many times these proteins which are have different shapes also they are now extended molecules and heating also helps in that. Now, many times also you can use other denaturing agents for example, urea is quite commonly used uh, denaturing agent uh, which disrupts the hydrogen bonds and it is widely used for nucleic acids as we will discuss later on, but for, for, for proteins also it can be used, but STS is the most widely heating and STS uh, uh, is uh, the most widely used uh, uh, method. Now, advantages here uh, of uh, this particular method is that all poly polypeptide chains are now forced into extended conformations because of STS. SDS treatment eliminates the effect of differences in shape also like I was saying uh, that uh, shapes are now all extended. Then individual polypeptide chains migrate as a negatively charged SDS protein complex through the porous polyacrylamide gel and the speed of migration is proportional to the size of the proteins. Uh, smaller polypeptides will run faster because they will have less restrictive uh, or hindrances and larger polypeptides will run slower uh, because uh, the pore size will be smaller and they will be uh, kind of resistance will be higher for larger polypeptides. So, these are uh, you can say uh, the advantages uh, which STS provides uh, STS treatment provides uh, for running the electrophoresis uh, of uh, proteins in denaturing conditions. Now, if you can see in here figure, uh, you have two like samples here, one protein if you can see here is having disulfide linkages, one is without disulfide, 
Now, when they are heated in presence of mercaptoethanol, ethanol, these disulfide links are broken. Uh, it is uh, it is a reducing agent, so it reduces that. And then, if when uh, a single protein, though it is made of it is made of two polypeptide chains, but it will be seen as two separate bands here uh, in reducing gel. Now, to know whether it is a single protein, always you can run non reducing gels also. In non reducing gels, these uh, disulfide bridges will not be broken as mercapto ethanol will not be included in the sample buffer and single band could be obtained in here. So, both ways you can like say if your protein has uh, say a certain uh, uh, disulfide bridges between the polypeptide chains, uh, then if you are utilizing reducing gel certainly you will get two bands you will not be uh, able to know whether it is pure or not if you are testing the purity. So, then you must run a non reducing gel that is sample buffer not having mercaptoethanol and if single band comes then you will be uh, sure that uh, it is a it is a same protein it is a single protein made of two polypeptide or more uh, polypeptide chains. So, how this uh, STS page is performed the practical aspects of this. Now, the first step in discontinuous electrophoresis is to pour the separating gel like I told you and uh, in earlier uh, lecture I have shown you how to cast the gel. So, there what you are going to do first thing is resolving or separating uh, gel will be casted first then separating gels will typically contain uh, like I said 6 to 20 percent of acrylamide uh, and the size range of the proteins being separated uh, has to be taken into account uh, desired resolution amount of sample being applied all these factors needs to be considered while choosing the acrylamide concentration. Once you have casted the uh, uh, resolving gel, then once it is uh, polymerized, you will put the stacking gel and with comb in it like I have shown you earlier, so that wells could be created. Now, uh, there could be resolving gel where you can use gradient gels also uh, and these gradient gels uh, it is a pore size gradient gels we can say, because uh, there will be uh, either uh, decrease in the pore size as as the you move down uh, the glass plate. So, uh, that will give uh, better separation it could be step gradient or it is a continuous uh, gradient uh, gel uh, and in many situations where you have to examine both high and low molecular weight proteins on the same gel the gradient gels are more advantageous. Uh, the stacking gel is poured after the separating gel uh, polymerizes and just before electrophoresis uh, to uh, is done. Uh, once these are polymerized uh, and you have to take care that both resolving gel when it is polymerized or polymerized you can overlay it with uh, uh, say organic solvent or so that surface labels properly and then you can remove that uh, and then pour the stacking gel and put the comb. Now, once it is done you load your samples into the wells of the gel and uh, the current will be applied. Now, samples for STS phase are prepared in uh, uh, our sample buffer as we have discussed earlier that is 0 0.0625 molar tris pH 6.8, but it contains 2 percent STS and uh, 5 percent mercaptoethanol if it is a reducing gel. Uh, also 10 percent glycerol is present. Now, mercaptoethanol uh, uh, is added just before the experiment and glycerol will provide density for underlaying the sample on the stacking gel below the electrode buffer. So, like since buffer is already put in, um, uh, it, if you have a glycerol it will uh, not diffuse and properly uh, settle down in the well. A tracking dye uh, that is bromophenol blue uh, around 0 0.025 percent is also included in the sample uh, and this dye reaches the bottom of the gel and uh, so what you will know is uh, when to turn off the power uh, and that is the like fastest. So, you do not want to go after that. Uh, otherwise your uh, samples might overrun. A common way to detect uh, proteins after electrophoresis is performed is to stain the gel that we will be discussing later on. Uh, before staining gels are usually fixed uh, with acetic acid methanol solutions and like 10 percent acetic acid 40 percent methanol or so. Uh, and uh, which uh, what happens is uh, it fixes the protein or precipitates the protein into the acrylamide matrix. So, they do not move or diffuse and you can easily 
do the staining. After staining, uh, the gel will look something like this. You have like here, these are molecular weight markers, these are different samples which have been done and you can see these uh, blue bands here, which is mean stained with Kamasi brilliant blue and this is uh, you can get a very good, uh, this, is a very, uh, this is how you will, uh, you can see your gel and different band patterns. Now, like I was saying, uh, uh, this gel here, which I have shown you, mostly it is for the high molecular mass proteins. Uh, when you have to uh, run uh, very small molecular mass proteins, then uh, it is better to have uh, uh, rather than glycine buffer, you can have triacine buffer. Triacine buffer is better for a smaller polypeptide chains and uh, they will stack, uh, they will uh, separate better in triacine buffer. Uh, STS page is uh, widely used for like we say calculation of molecular mass. Uh, so, you can identify the protein and get some information about it. Now, molecular masses of proteins can be estimated by comparing the migration of proteins of interest to standards of known size. <coughs> uh, if you could recall like I told you earlier that gel is a, a very random uh, uh, mesh work uh, like it precipitates and fibers are formed and then they form a random structure. Uh, many times uh, gel, these things cannot be repeated actually as uh, every time you cast a gel it might be different. So, you have to uh, uh, really compare it with standards actually every time you run your sample. So, the relative mobilities of the standards are plotted against the log of their molecular masses and then you can compare uh, the size of the unknown protein and then extrapolate from the standard curve. So, here what you do is a relative mobility or R f values calculated. If you can recall when we were talking about the chromatographic techniques, uh, particularly in thin layer and paper chromatography, the R f value is a very important factor. So, here also uh, it could be like uh, calculated by dividing the distance the protein migrates to the distance total length of the gel or the dye front actually. So, what, what is uh, done? Uh, for example, this is your standards here. Uh, so, the migration of the standards uh, could be taken. So, you have taken like these are the molecular mass here, uh, you take make uh, you can uh, calculate the log of uh, molecular mass and then here distance migrated. So, you have uh, distance like 14.5 millimeter for this band and likewise uh, 92 millimeter for this band last band and total gel length will be around 100 millimeter. So, R f value can be calculated by dividing by the total gel length and then you can plot the R f value uh, log molecular mass against the R f value and you can uh, this uh, standard curve can provide you uh, the uh, size of the unknown sample. So, this is how uh, very easily uh, and uh, molecular mass uh, it is approximate I would say approximate molecular mass could be calculated uh, here. So, STS page uh, is a very useful technique uh, uh, to be used. So, in this lecture to summarize we have discussed about the continuous system buffer system and the discontinuous buffer system. The continuous buffer system utilizes a single constant pH buffer all over like in electrode buffer or gel buffer, whereas in discontinuous system there is a multiphasic buffer system like you have uh, say stacking gel buffer, you have a resolving gel buffer, electrode buffer, sample buffer uh, likewise. Uh, so, Ornstein and Davis made this uh, for polyacrylamide gels first time and this was a very uh, it gave high resolution because you can concentrate the protein in stacking gel and then when they enter, they enter as one entity into the resolving gel. Uh, Lamely improved it further for molecular mass determination by uh, making it a denaturing gels and introduced, uh, he put 2 percent STS and that is the most widely used uh, electrophoretic technique in or routinely used uh, technique in lot of labs here, uh, biochemistry labs. So, 2 percent STS page in sample and 0.1 percent STS in buffers 
which denatures uh, uh, through heating and mercaptoethanol reduces the disulfide bridges. Uh, so, polypeptide is completely extended and all different proteins are completely extended and overlaid with a negative charge. So, they move according to their size actually, because charge is uh, uh, the ratio is same, uh, mass to charge ratio is same. Uh, so, uh, that way uh, you can compare with the standards uh, proteins and you can calculate the molecular mass of an unknown sample or unknown protein here. Also, uh, STS page gives you a clue about the purity of the sample, uh, whether say you have gone through a purification procedure and then first thing to do is whether your purification uh, is uh, done or not, you have accomplished the purification, the STS page is run to see that you get a single band. Now, remember even if you get a single band, it is not 100 percent purification there might be uh, impurities which are not seen because you are utilizing a particular kind of detection system like say Kamasi brilliant blue can give you uh, to a certain extent as we will discuss later on, but silver staining can further give you uh, is much more sensitive and can tell you about impurity if, uh, if you want to know so. So, uh, uh, in the next lecture uh, we are going to discuss about uh, two more techniques that is isoelectro focusing, uh, where uh, P i is taken uh, for separation and uh, 2 D gel electrophoresis, which is uh, uh, like uh, to separate many samples in two dimensions that we are going to discuss in next lecture. Also, we will be discussing about detection methods of proteins and preparative gel electrophoresis in the next lecture. Thank you.